Hello world, welcome back to the disaster that is currently unfolding inside and outside of the camper. So it's a mess in here. <laughs> That's really not the problem right now though. We are continuing to try to address numerous issues that have popped up in the past week. Our last video, we talked about the issues with our solar primarily that we were trying to fix. The part that we needed has arrived. Stand by. This is it. It's a miniature um, circuit breaker. And a couple people did comment on our last video saying, don't use that, use something else. That's junk. We're not saying this is the greatest thing of all time. This is just um, what we had been using before, before we started having the issues and everything seemed to be okay. For those who were curious, we used a template from a solar expert when figuring out our system and that individual used something similar to this. So that's why we have this as a cutoff switch. So here's where things are at right now. Just got this in the mail today and Cole is gone. He is working on getting some of our truck issues addressed right now. So I am going to do my best to install this by myself. I think we'll be fine. The truck issues, we'll talk more about that later. There are a lot of other issues. Anyway, Cole has it at the shop right now, trying to get it diagnosed, and we're gonna see what we wanna do after that. So let's try to get this in. All right, first things first, we have to get up on the roof to cover the solar panels so there's not a charge going through the wires while we're working on them. And I just used a couple towels for this. Nothing can be easy. I turned off the fan. Look at my hair right now. <gasps> oh man, it's so hot. I turned off the fan, our um, Max Air fan, because I just like to unplug things before I like cut all power and when i un when i turned off the fan the inverter like beeped really loud and then when i unplugged something else it beeped really loud and i i don't know why that's never happened before all right pause for a second turns out there was just a setting on the inverter that cole had changed and i didn't know it's all fixed now everything's fine with that all power is cut right now the solar panels are covered so now i'm going to take the electrical tape off of the wires. Here we go. Wish me luck. Okay. Change of plans. Cole took all of our tools with him and this wire needs to be trimmed before I can reconnect it. We're just gonna wait. I'm gonna leave the panels covered and we're just gonna wait until he gets back with tools. It's so hot outside. Uh. All right, round two, it's the next day. Got the solar panels covered up again, and now we're getting power disconnected to everything so we can install our little breaker. Here we're just checking to make sure the wires are safe before we start working with them. Once we got those trimmed, it was time to connect them into the new switch. Just checking to make sure everything is secure since that was what caused our solar issues to begin with is one of the wires was not securely in place. Once we knew everything was properly in place, it was time to test the solar. Turn this on. Good stuff. Turn the inverter on. Good stuff. Ready? So we want this light to turn on. It's not. charging 10.6 oh yeah yeah hello what's that we got a truck I don't mind. Ah, see you, back. you want to come out 
Okay, so yes, we got a new truck. Technically not a new truck, it's a used truck, new to us, and we wanna get you guys caught up to speed on how we made that decision and why we made that decision. Let's give you a brief overview of what has been going on with the truck, uh, the old truck. It had a host of issues that really started popping up, I would say, in the past few weeks. Things really snowballed in the past week, week and a half or so. The biggest issue that we were running into is the truck was just struggling to tow. It just always sounded like it was working really, really hard when we hooked it up to the trailer, especially if we were going up any type of incline, even if it wasn't a very steep grade and we weren't really sure why that was the case. And then something more serious started to happen. Uh, Cole can explain that. With the F-150, it's got this kind of fail safe. If, there's, if the computer thinks there's anything wrong with the engine, it goes into what they call limp mode, where basically all power is cut off. And a lot of the time you can only drive about five miles an hour when that happens. So there was a few occasions we were driving on the highway, you know, 60, 65 miles an hour, and all of a sudden a wrench would pop up on the screen, there'd be a pretty loud thud, and we would lose all power and just have to coast to the shoulder. Um, and when we did that, we had to just turn off the truck it sounded awful while it was in that mode. Turn off the truck, let it rest for a little bit, and we'd turn it back on, and it would be gone. But that is definitely a safety hazard, especially when you're towing, to have the truck just lose all power when driving down the highway. So that was not great. Yeah, and that was happening even when we were just like on flat ground, not going up a hill or anything. So the check engine light came on at one point and we do have a code reader. So we ran the code and it told us that there was a bad O2 sensor, um, which we didn't think was necessarily causing us to lose power, but uh, we decided to bring it into the shop anyway and see what was going on with that. So we took the truck to a Ford dealership right outside of Seattle and I gave them the code it was still in the system. It was a bad O2 sensor. They said that could have been the cause of the loss of power. Um, so they went ahead and fixed that. It was about a four to $500 fix. And they said that should solve our issues, but it did not. Yeah, it still sounded really bad, uh, even after they fixed that. Um, still just struggling to go uphill. It actually sounded worse. The truck just sounded like it was like wheezing all the time, like gasping for air. It would get stuck and it just wouldn't shift. And I read tons of forums, did tons of research with other issues. And a lot of people said it could be a throttle body issue. Some people said it could be a turbo issue. So there was lots of different things that people said could be causing this or has caused it with the 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine in the F-150 that we had. Long story short, we made the decision to trade it in. I feel like part of us traveling on the road is you have to kind of fix things on the fly and we having a reliable tow vehicle is just as important as having a good camper. It's like you can't go anywhere. <laughs> we couldn't move on to our next destination. We couldn't stay on our schedule unless we had something that could reliably get us from place to place. So, so I think it's important to point out that truck was more than 10 years old. It was uh, an 2011. A 2011, so an 11 year old vehicle with over 100,000 miles on it. So putting thousands of dollars into repairs, four or $5,000 into repairs, which is what we were expecting to pay if we did choose to go that route, didn't seem to make sense, especially when we did didn't know if it was for sure going to fix our issues. We were okay with trying a couple hundred bucks in repairs just to see if that made a difference. But after that, it just seemed like a, a more logical step to trade the vehicle in. So we got a 2016 Ford F-150. It is the XLT package and it also has the Sport package. And it is the Super Crew Cab, so it has the four big doors in it. And it also has the five liter V8 engine, which our previous F-150 had the 3.5 liter V6. So we got the bigger engine on the newer truck. You know, in a perfect world, we would have liked to have something even newer and even more powerful, but that just wasn't in the cards right now. And again, we're trying to continue traveling right now. We didn't want to be stuck for a long period of time. So we just kind of took what we could get when we could get it. We're not ready for that diesel life yet, just because our camper is only about 5,000 pounds totally loaded. And we thought that might be a little bit of overkill. And 
we don't want to have a big diesel truck just to drive around when we're not towing. This video has kind of been, oh, I don't know, again, a mess of just what's been going on in our life the past week. We feel lucky that things broke while we were in an area where we could make repairs, but we still had to cancel a lot of our plans um, in order to make these repairs, and we did have to spend a lot of money. So that just gives you an idea of what life on the road is like. It seems like every month or so, five things break all at the same time. It would be great if we could go two more months now without anything else breaking. But we appreciate you guys sticking around, watching this video. Uh, I hope it didn't bore you to death, and I hope you got a kick out of watching us try to DIY fix things. I'm sure there will be more videos just like this down the road. Please drop a comment below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We do videos like this showing you real life RV life and also fun adventure videos. Two videos a week, Monday and Friday, so hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.